I was waxing her Brazilian and um, after every single time I pulled a strip, he would kiss her. And I was like, okay, like trying to mind my business, you know, not look. <laughs> I'm, you know, applying the booty strips and he's like spanking her butt. Like, I'm like, you gotta be kidding like, me. Just like a tap, but it was making me clap, you know? No, no. And, I, and we made a lot of money, girl. We both made about $30,000 each. Oh, we were the classes. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beauty with a Twist. I'm super excited for this week's episode because we have a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Ariana and I am the owner of Ari's Waxing Lounge in Santa Fe Springs, California. Ooh. I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> Thank you for having I know me. that we met once. Yes. And I was like, I just needed to have you on my podcast. I was like, Ari, I need you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself and we'll go from there. Okay. So I've been in business for almost five years. I started out at European Wax Center. And then from there, I started my own business secretly, actually, on the side. I actually got fired at European Wax Center. Everyone gets fucking fired from European Wax Center. <laughs> Thank God they didn't sue me. So oh, I'm shit. very grateful for that. But from there, I rented my hairdresser's uh, solo salon for, I would say, like six months to a year. Mm -hmm. Then the pandemic hit. I went and rented a room in Bellflower from a friend. Um, then I finally rented a room in Cyprus. I was there for like a year and a half. And then I um, abruptly moved to a shop in La Mirada. And that's where I learned my lesson about permits and licensing and stuff like that. And then I was only there for like three months. And then I finally got a shop there where we are now in Santa Fe Springs. And I've been there for almost two years. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about European. Okay. Did you, do you, did you think you learned? Because I feel like I have like, oh my God, yes, I learned. And then I have people that are like, mm. it was good, but it wasn't like the best and or and i have other people that are like fuck that place you know yeah. what i mean yeah for sure i know a lot of people have really negative vibes towards them yes but i actually have the opposite i am so grateful for european wax center i had a great experience i had great coworkers. i learned how to speed wax i learned about aftercare i even learned how to run a waxing business from Do working them. there yeah wow. that's actually a lot of things that i implement in my current business is from what i learned there so i'm so grateful for them and shout out to them for not uh suing me yeah <laughs> for starting my own business <laughs> did you did they fire you because you were starting up to take because you're not allowed to take clients on the side right correct so you're actually they have the rights to your waxing so you're actually not allowed to wax outside of their business um and so they sat me down one day and they showed me a screenshot of my <gasps> instagram and they said you know we we are all aware that you have another business and today's going to be your last day and so that's how it happened. It wasn't necessarily <laughs> that I was stealing clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just that I was waxing. That's it? Yeah, pretty much. So you weren't even taking their clients. Well, girl, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling some clients, you know? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also was gaining new clientele. So it was actually funny. One day I was waxing one of the girls. I wasn't like super familiar with her, but I just let her know like, hey, I'm going to start waxing up the street. If you ever want to get waxed for cheaper, yeah. hit me up. And she's like, I'm a nail tech. Like, let me give you a shout out. She gave me a shout out. And those are my first three clients. And from there, it just like kept on going. Once a week, I continued to r rent her solo salon. And um, I was fully booked, girl. I was there from eight to eight. Like I was in at her solo salon. At her solo salon. And I would come and I would pack, like I would set up shop. Like I had a little retail shelf. Mm -hmm. I would decorate for the holidays. Like, and then at the end of the night, I'd pack up everything and I'd put my wax table into my back seat or into my trunk. And I was a hustler, girl. And I wouldn't even book myself a lunch because I wasn't taking deposits. I was like, oh, people will know show, but. It got to a point where I was literally booked out and I was making what I made in two weeks at European Wax Center in one day. Yeah. I was what? So wait, were they paying you? Because I don't really know too much mm -hmm. about European, but you get paid hourly, correct? Yes. Yeah, so do you your tips go 100% to you too? They do. Yeah, of course. But you are making minimum wage. So I was bringing in about maybe $1,000 every two weeks and then working solo, I was making that in a day. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So when I got fired, I told my best friend, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to have to go get another job. And she was like, girl, you make what you make in one day for yourself that you do in two weeks at your yeah. last year. Like, just keep on doing this. And shout out to Sage. Yeah. Because. <laughs> shout I, out to you. <laughs> yeah. I kept on doing it. And here we are now. So you, when you were at, okay, so what year was this back in? That was 2019. It was so almost COVID. five years ago. Yes. Yeah, so it was right before COVID. So right when I got fired from European Wax Center. I continued to work for like one or two months. And from one day to the next, the solo salon closed and I had nowhere to go, nothing to do. Um, and so I reached out to one of my other friends who had a salon and I asked her, you know, can I rent your salon? And she said, yes. But at the solo salon, I was paying $40 a day and this friend offered me $100 a day. So I had to bust my butt, girl. I had yeah. to work again from eight to eight. And it was scary times. Like it was in Lakewood and there was like the National Guard up the street. It was 
mid pandemic, like there was riots, there was curfews, like <gasps> yeah, it was crazy. But I was booked out because everyone was closed. And how how were your pricing? So I was charging thirty five dollars Brazilians when I very first started. Dang. Yeah. So. This was out of the European Wax Center, though, right? Out of European Wax Center, $35 Brazilians, yes. Dang. And where are you at now? 70 Sheesh. <laughs> so then after that, after you left your friends, yes. how long were you there? I was at my friends for about six months, and then I was able to get a room for rent um, in Cyprus. And I was there for about a year and a half. It was a really small room, but I made it work. And I continued to build my clientele. And girl, I was fully booked. I would book out in 30 minutes after opening up my availability. I was fully booked for years. So all these clients, were they coming from like word by mouth or was it like from like you constantly posted on social media? Like where was it? Where were all these people coming from? Yeah. So when I very first started in 2019, there was no TikToks. There was no reels. Like Instagram was so different. Yeah. I like followed a few estheticians, but they were like in Texas. Like things were just different. It was more big chains. Mm -hmm. And so when TikTok very first came out, I actually went viral a couple times and actually not for anything waxing related. Um, I went viral for like a weight loss video and then for a money saving challenge. And it got me a lot of clients, actually. And it got me a, a decent following on Instagram. Dang. See, and that's what, like all oh, it's always the random videos that get you viral. Yeah. Thank and, God for it. Honestly. Yeah. And then those ones that you really try on, they don't get you. Like, I know. I'm like, this one's going to go viral. And, and it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> always <likes>. happens <laughs> like that. So then now after that, then you went after you rented that you were there for six months yes. and then you went to I your went first to storefront. So I've actually never had a storefront, but I went to La Mirada. It was a big, beautiful business building. Um, it was all glass mm -hmm. and inside had an elevator. It was beautiful. And so Ooh. I rented there. And uh, at this point, I was like, OK, I'm going to be serious about my business because actually prior, I never saw aesthetics as a career. I actually wanted to be a nurse. So I was in school for nursing for a long time, just doing my prereqs. And so uh, when I got to La Mirada, when I got to that part in my life, I was like, you know, what? I'm actually going to take my business serious. I make what I would make as a nurse, honestly. And so. I'm just going to make this like my career. I'm going to mm -hmm. have employees. My goal is to have a storefront. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to get everything legit. I'm going to get all my licensing. I'm going to get a business license, an establishment license, a reseller's license. And so I moved in. I put in wood floors. I painted. I decorated. Um, I was there for like a month. And then I applied for a business license. And like a week later, somebody came by and they took pictures of my shop. And they told me, we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to give you a ticket for $100. And every day that you're still here, it's going to double. So $200, $400, and so on. But why? Because they didn't have zoning permits for a beauty business. So it was technically in an industrial area. Even though it was a business building, um, it wasn't meant for beauty services. So each city has a zoning map. And it, it shows what's industrial, what's residential, what's um, yes. commercial. Mm -hmm. And you can only have a space in a commercial area. And so that's when I learned that that very valuable license. So I had to move abruptly and it was really scary because I just paid apartment rent, shop rent, just invested all that. And I wasn't getting any of that money back. So you had to like break your lease. And the, the thing is, a lot of the times, like your property owner or whoever owns the property yeah. should tell you that. Absolutely. Yeah. And there was other beauty professionals there, but I guess they just never got business licenses. And it was my first time really, truly learning what a business license yes. was and how essential it was. And so yes. I never even knew, no one ever taught me this in esthetician school. Like this is stuff you really learn on your own. So, mm -hmm. so then you, how long were you at over there first? Um, um, less than three months. Oh my god! Very quick. And so I posted it on social media and dire stress. Like I wanted to crawl under a rock and die. Like girl, I was like, this is the end of the world. This <laughs> yes. is the great depression. Yes. But, um, I posted it on social media and someone was like, you can come rent my shop. Several people said you can come to my shop for free or for really cheap. Like these girls on Instagram are such a blessing. Yeah. And so one of the girls, I took her up on the offer. I think she charged me $400 for the month and the hustle continued eight to eight every single day. I was going to make as much money as possible. And I saw at least 30 locations before I picked my location. Um, I was so dedicated girl. I was on Facebook market mm -hmm. on just all these different sites trying to find a new space. And that's when I found our current space. Yeah. And then the current space that you're at right now, it's like. I've seen it. It's like a, yes. um, in a, like a, it's like an office, office space. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of like an older building, but she's cute. She's 400. No, she's cute. Yeah. She's 420 square feet. It's two rooms in a lobby. So we rent out one of our rooms. One of our rooms is currently available for rent. And then our other room, I have two team members now. So we all wax in there and then we have a cute little lobby. Yeah. So what made you like decide, like, when did you start realizing, like, oh, my gosh, like, I need to take a break because this is too much for me yeah. and I need to start hiring? When yeah. were you, like, at that point in your life when you were like, I just need a break? Yeah. It never got to a point where I was like, I'm burnt out. My body hurts. Like, I was still pretty young 
I'm still young, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was still at a point where I was like, you know, I can still do this, but I wanted to be making money when I wasn't at work. And so that was my idea is like, you know, yeah, I'm working five days, but I'm only working one shift. There's mm-hmm. still an AM, P- AM shift or a PM shift or mm-hmm. days that I'm not here mm-hmm. that someone else can be in here. And so I just saw kind of like a money opportunity to fill in that space. Yeah. And how did you decide like who to hire? Like how did, how did you even like come up? Did you post on Instagram that you were like hiring or? Okay. So when I was at that La Mirada shop, I was waxing one of my old coworkers, Julia, from European Wax Center. Mm-hmm. And she was currently pregnant. And I was telling her like, I want you to be my first uh, employee. Cause she's so sweet. She's professional. She's no drama. I've worked with her for years. I know her like integrity and her personality. Uh-huh. And so she was pregnant. So she was like, yeah, like after I have the baby, maybe, you know, and then all that fiasco happened where I had to move and what have you. Yeah. So once I moved, um, you know, I had the space for it. And so I asked her again, she continued to come and get waxed by me. And I asked her again, you know, do you want to be my employee? And she was like, yeah, I think I'll do it part time. And so my old coworker is my first employee. So now she was part time. Is she full time now? She's still part time because she wants to spend time with her baby. Yeah. Um, and then I have a second girl and she's also part time. So we all kind of do part time and we're all sharing one room. OK, so like how does that work? Like, do you guys yeah. do like so, who goes who? What days? So I only currently work about 19 hours a week and I work four days a week. So I work like a p.m. shift. I work 530 to 9 p.m. at night um, and then they work more of like a nine to five. So one of them works about four days and the other one works three days. Oh, yeah. So, so guys- we're there nine to nine, Monday through Saturday, and we're closed on Sunday. Oh, I'm like, dude, this is so crazy. Like you have, I just see you we constant- get the most out of that room. Girl. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I constantly see you post their like availability and like stuff yeah. like that. But it's just so crazy that you're able to have them fully booked too, right? For the most part. I mean, we definitely have our slow seasons like today when Michelle was fully booked. So that's beautiful. She had like 16 Brazilians. That's so So thank you to our clients. (laughs) Yes. Um, Yes. But every day is not like that for sure. So something that I've definitely learned from hiring people is it does take about six months to gain a clientele. And about one year, I start to see that you're about 70% booked. So we're still not even 100% booked with the girls, but we do have days that they are fully booked. And are you doing... We're going to get into that. Are, are you doing like, are they paying hourly? Or are you doing yeah, like, I pay them hourly. And then I also give them commission on retail and then they have opportunity for bonuses. So if they want to help me in a wax class and come teach brows um, or just different activities, I'll pay them extra. And so, yeah. And yeah. do you feel and they get their tips and, and the hundred percent tips, right? Of course. Yeah. And do you feel that like when you're slow, the slow season starts, yes. are you losing money because they're there the full shift? I'm actually not. No. So, um, for instance, a Brazilian is $70. So what you do is you look at how many hours your employee is going to be working and what you pay them. And then that equals a dollar amount. And then we have to make at least that dollar amount to break even. Obviously there's like supplies and overhead costs that go into Mm -hmm. effect too. But as long as we have like two or three clients on our books, we break even. And then anything above that is profit. And for the most part, we always are very profitable. So Thankfully, we don't have that issue, but there's times where I have to cut shifts, you know, if nobody booked for that day, um, which they do understand, you know, they're building their clientele. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have they both worked for you? So Michelle just hit six months and Julia just hit one year. Dang. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, girls. I appreciate that. Once they're <laughs> like over like that six month mark, that's it. Like they're and it's I feel yeah. like that too. Like a lot of people because my assistant shout out to her almost five years. She seems so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, shout out to her. But she's been working for me for so long. She's been working for me since my house days. And wow. I feel like a lot of people always ask, like, how do you find them or how to like mm-hmm. know that that's your person? And I feel like I've dealt with people i've dealt with like old assistants that you know yeah. were really bad <laughs> yeah, but not- it was hard it was hard to like actually like find one that would like yeah. stick with you you know so when i hired michelle i she was a stranger to me i hired her like the traditional way like i did phone interviews and i did an in-person interview and at the in-person interview i make them do like um a um what is it called like a practical where yeah, she yeah. performed a wax and i interviewed i was i had like i would say 20 phone interviews and about like five in-person interviews shout out to you you're a boss shout out to the girls who want to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when i did the in-person interviews honestly nothing felt right until i met michelle i'm what i'm really looking for is someone that's genuine someone that's real someone that's humble someone yes. that's going to be good to people because mm-hmm. These clients are literally everything to me. And I know that if they come to me, they're looking for the same experience from whoever I hire. So 
being genuine is so huge to me. And so there was something about her that was just so real. The way that she like spoke to the client, you know, like, are you doing okay, babe? How you feeling? I just, I really liked her. Yeah. So it just felt right. Yeah. And also too, like when I was looking for somebody too, I was looking for somebody and it sounds so wrong to say this, but I was looking for someone that didn't want to do what I do. Yeah. So Be- that was a big deterrent is yeah. when I did the phone interviews, if they said that they already had a business or they're looking to start a business. That's a big deterrent for me yes. because I really do need you to be here at least a year to grow your clientele and for us to both be profitable. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I can't have someone that wants to have your own business at the same time. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is a conflict of interest. It is a conflict of interest, especially because it's happened to me already where I had an assistant that they said, oh, I want to do what you do. And it they stole and your they stole ideas my clients, and things, yeah. girl. It got yeah. to the point they were stealing my, and I didn't know because I trusted my whole, everything to this, my assistant, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't. Like really, I just trusted her enough to where like, oh, she won't do that to me. Yeah. And it ended up backfiring. I've so, heard horror stories for sure. And that is scary. One thing that I'm always like, if you are looking for any employer or employee, mm-hmm. I just never try to be like them. Yeah. You know Communication what I mean? is key. I always tell my um, employees that there's a bigger picture at hand. Like I want to offer you more money, more opportunities. I want to see you grow. And I support you if you want to start your own business, but just be open and honest with me, you know, yeah. just tell me and I will gladly guide you into the right direction, but just let me know so I can hire someone else yeah. before you leave, like, <laughs> you know? So, so was it hard for you, for you to gain the clientele for your employees now? Yeah. Definitely. Everyone wants to go with you, right? Yeah, for sure. So The fact that I only work PM does help because they work in the AM. So for the girls that like to come in on their days off or before work or, you know, after they drop off their kids or whatever, Mm -hmm. it works out that they get to go to those girls. Also, I don't offer brow waxing and my girls do. So that kind of gives them opportunity for clients. Mm. Um, But yeah, it took some time to grow their clientele. We're we're still working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always see you like posting them. Like I see you posting them more than posting yourself. Yeah. So I'm always trying to promote them. Yeah. And that's just kind and of an that. added job that I've, you know, now that having employees, that's something that you have to do. Yeah. What's some advice that you can give to like a beginner waxer that's starting to be in this industry and starting like wants to build their clientele? Okay. So um, let me think. So about your Instagram, first off, I think you definitely need your location and your bio. That's huge. Sometimes I look into booking things and the location's like nowhere to be found. It's not tagged on the photos. It's not in the bio. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. That needs to be in it. I think you should also have highlights with your pricing and your availability. It should be accessible. If people have to message you, they're going to move on to the next person. Mm -hmm. And you look less professional as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Before and afters are huge. I wouldn't go to somebody that they have a bunch of pictures from Pinterest on their Instagram. Like, Oh my of, god, you know, red flag. Yeah, red, red flag. flag. <laughs> I wish like fake spa pictures. No, yeah. <laughs> like I need to see your before and after. Yes. And then I also want to see who see who's behind the phone. Like I want to know who you are and I want to come and support you. I I don't know if you're some creepy fake man or yes. something, you know? So I um definitely show who you are and be real, be genuine. And people that are like you, you're gonna attract as your clients. And then you have to be uh, active on social media every single day. You have to show up and remind people that they need to come get a wax or whatever service you offer. Yeah. Um, so being active on social media and let me think what else. Consistency is key. Post on all platforms, be on Google. Be on TikTok. Yeah, I think Google reviews hit. Yeah, girl. A lot of our bookings, it says the little G, Google. Yes, I'm Google. like, thank you, Google. Yes. <laughs> Keep I, on. Yelp me. is scary, but I feel like Yelp helped me too. I know yeah. it, sounds, it it Yelp is scary, but it helped yeah. me. I'm honestly not active on Yelp. We have like an account. I don't think we have any reviews, oh, but okay. I listened from one of your podcasts that like if they write a review in the shop, like it doesn't post or something so yes it needs to be I don't know. anytime you do like a yelp review it can be like i think i don't remember how many square feet it has to be like they have to be far they away know, yeah yeah they know how far you're crazy to be. and i'm like yelp is the police and sometimes <laughs> i'm like i'm trying to give you five dollars off on your wax but what if i know you don't post that yelp review yeah. you know what i mean so it is a hit or miss on yelp but i feel like i did get clients from yelp okay good yeah. to know i'm gonna work on our yelp do you think like, how do you feel about when people put their personal though with their business Instagram though? So I think that you always need to keep a professionalism. Like, for instance, like I'm 420 friendly, but I would never post a picture of me smoking on Instagram yeah, like or smoking any- a fucking blunt. Yeah, like- but I'll post if a client gives me one. Like, <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just needs to be professional. I think just limit your personal things, and it should always tie back to business or tie back to the beauty industry, things like that. So I try to, you know. Keep it to a minimum, but also share the personal things. People love to 
see my apartment or see my boyfriend or stuff like that. Yeah. And I feel like too, like, and I mentioned this before, like lifestyle videos are coming to where like people want to see just you, like how you said. People People love a day in the life. Yes. I love it. I love when you do it. Yeah. I'm just (laughs) like, why the fuck do you want to know when I'm going to fucking Taco Bell? Like, you know, or somewhere. Like we would never even know that you (laughs) that you're in college, you know, unless you posted it. And it just adds another element to you that makes people relatable to you. So yeah. I, it's kind of like the Kardashian effect. Like we feel like we know them, but we don't. But it makes us just like support them. And so yeah. people support us based off of how we connect. Yes. And do you think that's a good way of gaining like followers? Because you Absolutely. have a big platform. So like, how did you gain your followers so fast? So going viral on TikTok a couple of times okay. definitely did boost the Instagram and the TikToks. Um, just being consistent and just creating a platform where I just shared who I truly am. You know, I, I show everything. I show... I don't know. Everything, you know, (laughs) I see it. I'm like, yeah, I'm always like on your page. I'm like, what is she doing? Or like, I always see Julia. I like how you you guys post like you're outside and you guys take pictures of each other. Yeah, I'm always I always see that shit. Once a month we do a team meeting and we batch a bunch of content. We take photos together. You guys just got pedicures. Yeah, we just got pedicures. We had a Galentine's. I love to be generous to them because I'm so appreciative of them. They work really hard. You know, Uh uh-huh. So I love the fact that you do that because it just shows how much you actually like care for them. I really do. And I just feel like, you know, you could see from how a small business treats their employees to a corporate corporation, how they treat their employees. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I really admire like Chick-fil-A, In-N-Out, Dutch Bros. Like, have you ever noticed how their customer service is just A1? Like, something's different about them compared to other fast food places. And I really want to replicate that. Like, I really want it to be a family unit. I really want to give back to my employees. And I know like in and out they have like a big picnic where they give away free I don't yes. know, TVs and stuff. Yes, yes, And yes, so yes. I have like this dream, like one day I'm going to have a bigger team. I'm going to pick them up in a party bus and we're going to go to Not Scary Farm with like all their significant <laughs> others. Like I just want, I, like gift giving is my love language. So yes. I just love doing special things for people. And Wait, so what was your sign? I'm a Libra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Libras. I'm a loving Libra. <laughs> <laughs> so do you going back to like the gaining followers for someone that's barely starting do you think it's just from TikTok though? Like, should they do hashtags? They should. They should hashtag. They should tag their location. Something else that I do is sometimes I'll write things on my videos, like brow waxing, um, waxing near me. I'll write all these different words and then I'll move it out of the frame so that when people search things, your video pops up. Wait. Okay. So, like, when you post a video, yes, you I'll like, write words on the video and then I'll move it out of the frame so that nobody can see it. So, like, hashtag though, it doesn't hashtag. It's I'm literally writing on the video. And then moving it out of frame so that when people type in things, it like generates for it to pop up. That's a thing? That yeah. Can ha- really? Yeah. So okay. Then- if I, okay, let's, cause I'm learning something. So if I post a brow video. Yes. And I'm just showing brows. So I'm doing a reels. I'm posting it as a reels. Um, I just go type something and then I just move it. It doesn't have to be hashtag. So what do I type in like? So you're going to do it on the actual video. Like, you know, if you were to write on the video, like brow waxing. Like on actual video. Okay, yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just continue to write more things that it's about waxing videos, satisfying videos, waxing near me, maybe the city that you're in waxing, then move it all out of frame. And then when people type in things or when people have, you know, like on their For You page, these are videos that they like, yeah. you're going to pop up. Damn, I learned something. Something else I do is I tag my local cities. So sometimes when I post my before and afters, I'll put a city that we're not located in so yeah. that my hashtag will pop up in their city. So you'll, do you like put it in their hashtag or you just put their at name? So every single post I put, you know, waxing in Santa Fe Springs, waxing in Norwalk, waxing in La Mirada. We're located in Santa Fe Springs, but I'll tag the photo that we're in Cerritos, you know? So yes, that's what I do too. And I yeah. even put my location different. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, I'll be putting like I'm in LA, girl. No, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> just, just come. Okay, just come. You're no, but that it. helps too. <laughs> yeah. So hashtags. You think the location? What's another one? Let me think. Just being consistent, honestly. Coming on every single day, having a variety of content. You don't want to post the same thing every day. Like we have availability, we have availability. You know. Yes. So post more than that. Post you setting up. Just post something that shows your personality. Talk behind the camera. That's so huge. You know. Yeah. Just share things with people. People love to see that, you know, you're on like a health journey or that, I don't know, you're walking your dogs or that you got a smoothie today or (laughs) whatever. People just love to be a part of your life. Yeah, I think that's huge, too. And I also think, too, like, um, just not posting like 
just stuff about like before and afters. Yeah. But posting like educational posts too. For sure. That's huge. Definitely. Like, you know, if this person got hives from waxing hives, why did the person get hives? Is it normal? Like, you know, yeah. all these things about or it. Or aftercare or products that are bad at Target or yes. all those types. Having a variety of content is super important. Yeah. I think educational videos hit because I be posting some. I'm like, holy shit. Like, why does this get better than I just fucking yeah. edit it for like two hours, you know? Or story times, anything. Yeah. It's great to have a variety of content. So when you were at your marietta the la mirada la mirada yes okay so that one how did how did you start learning about the resellers permit how did you start learning about your business establishment like yeah how did that happen so i actually took a class class (laughs) it was by the lashpreneur um i didn't love everything about the class no offense but i did learn a ton from the class um she taught us you know what certifications we need what type of contract should your employees sign how does payroll work how does payroll taxes work all that type of stuff. And so it just gave me a ton of insight. And so that's where I really learned, you know, what a business license is, what a reseller's license is, um, all that establishment license. So did you get, because I feel like I've never talked about this and I want you to talk about it. Sure. So like for the business establishment license, like, yes, do you think that a person should get that like automatically when they start the business? Um, if you are in a place that has zoning for your business, obviously don't rat yourself out if you're not somewhere safe. <laughs> yeah. So what if a person is just starting off at home? Yeah. So I know that there's a lot of rules with that home. I know that you have to have like a separate entrance, separate bathroom, and yes. then I'm sure you have to get the okay by your city. It has to be written off. It ha- they have you have to show the city that you're working from home and t- like actually like report that you're working from home. Yeah. And so an establishment license is through the Board of Cosmetology and mm-hmm. Aesthetics and things. So you're literally telling state board, "Hey, this is where I am." So you're honestly giving them an opportunity to come stop by and take and a look. And they will. And they will. So um yeah, just be ready for that. Make sure that once you're applying for that establishment license, that you have everything labeled correctly, that everything is clean and sanitary and you have proper protocols. Yes. Um, and please, if you're a waxer, please have that waxing paper because they will get you. They will get you. See, now that's controversial because some people say the wax pad is enough, that it's non-porous. But I beg to differ because if somebody puts their shoe on that wax pad, why is it stained? Take a sip of your drink. <laughs> Just saying. So we use bed paper in this Spill house. Spill the tea. <laughs> and we only sanitize our bed with medical grade wipes. Oh, period. No Clorox wipes, no bleach wipes. That only kills viruses, not diseases. Girl, period. And there can be an STD inside. Yes, so. yes. I now 100% you know. agree. <laughs> How about your reseller's permit? Yes, so a reseller's permit is letting the state know that you are now selling retail and that you now want to pay sales tax. Mm, and that sales tax, baby, does hit. Okay. And, and guess what? They send you mm. a bill at the end of the year and they just make up a number. They're like, hey, you owe us a thousand. Can you believe? <laughs> so I don't even, we'll get to the number. Yeah. But you don't even want to know what I paid Girl, last year. I don't. <laughs> and I looked at this number and I was looking at my tax person. I yeah. said, you're tripping. So they'll send you like a scare number. Yeah. But as long as you have everything documented, oh, yeah, yeah. you're good. You know how long it took me that? Like for like for her to go through everything. Jeez. And I was like, oh my God. But it knocked it down like half. Good. Yeah. So we use Vigaro every time we sell a product. We check it out through Vigaro. Mm-hmm. And then you want to look up your city sales tax. So Santa Fe Springs is 10.5%. So kind of a little hefty. Wow. Santa Fe Springs. Come on. Let's lower it down. But anyways, um, so that is added on to every single product that we sell, unfortunately. And so the sales tax that the client pays, we then send to the state to pay. Yeah. So that's actually what I do, too. It's automatically yeah. on all my services, too. And that's how it is. If you go shopping anywhere, there's sales tax. Yeah. So- so that's why you- I do tell my clients to bring cash. However, yeah, I still will do the card because I do need it on paper that I'm making this much amount. Because if you are trying to buy a house or you are trying to purchase something, you can't and you, you're making all this money, but you don't have it on paper. And you paid the sales tax when you bought the product. You paid the shipping. Yeah. And so and it don't mean shit. If yeah. you don't have that on paper and you just have it in cash. That's why I do see yeah. a lot of people say, hey, bring cash. And it's good that way. Yeah. But it's also not going to benefit you in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people don't talk about that shit. Yeah. You know? A lot of people. Period. <laughs> I, still tell, I still tell my clients to bring cash though. Bring cash, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we can waive that sales tax. <laughs> so the, do you think it's better, it's beneficial? If let, Let's say someone doesn't even sell product at all, but yeah. they, okay, let me rephrase this. Let's say someone does sell product, but not a lot. Should they still get the reseller's permit? Yeah, so you can claim whatever you're selling as products. So say you sold $100. One, how about like two cleansers a day? 
Yeah. I mean, uh, there's benefits of having a reseller's permit too. Then you can now buy things in bulk. There's some um, vendors that they won't sell to you without a reseller's permit. So there's I, a lot of brands. Yeah. I even kind of dove into like permanent jewelry there for a bit. And I went down to downtown LA and they were like, do you have a reseller's permit? And I was able to pull it on up and get things wholesale. So there's a benefit to having a wholesale license. So, and that's what the uh, reseller's license is. So, yeah. Cause I'm like, there's like a lot of um, people that would ask me if they should get a reseller's permit. Yeah. And I do tell them yes, only cause it will benefit you. Even if you are selling like small items. It's free. I don't think it expires. Does it expire? Mine says it, it was established on and it doesn't have an expiration on it. So Actually, maybe it does expire. No, it does expire because okay. mine expired. Yeah, okay, yeah. good to know then. Okay, I'll yeah, triple yeah. check ours. Yeah, but mine expired. And for sure my business establishment expired. Well, for sure those. Do, yeah, yes. and then I, I, it wasn't much to, to redo Renew it. But it. Um, for sure I know the resellers does expire. Okay, I'm going to check on to ours. Because <laughs> I was just looking at it the other day and it was like, it started on, but it didn't have an expiration. So I'm going to check. But um, do you give that advice to beginner waxers, though? Like, what is some advice that you would give to someone that's barely starting in this industry? So definitely start cheap and be available. You know, you can't be picky and choosy with your clients, especially if you don't have any other obligations. Like, obviously, if you have children, you're only available certain hours. But if you're young and free and all that, I would say if somebody wants to come in at eight o'clock, girl, you better drive down there. (laughs) <laughs> or you, if it's at your house, you better service that client because yes. this can be a client that's going to stick with you for years. So be available, be generous to them, you know, give them discounts, especially because you're new, have opportunities for them to maybe get $5 off different incentives, you know? Yeah. And I just treat all my clients like my friends, like my family. And so they'll, they'll just come back, you know? And do a lot of, do some of your clients from European boxers still go to you? They do actually. I, I only good. have maybe like three or four, but they're so awesome. I can't believe they're still coming to me five years later. <laughs> that is crazy. I was 20 years old, girl. Like, I was such a baby. Like, I was telling them, like, I'm in Vegas this weekend. And here I am now, all these years later. I'm like, don't even party like I'm that. I'm just going home <laughs> to put them on a mask and yeah. I'm going to watch TV. That's my Saturday night. <laughs> exactly. And so they grew up with me. It's crazy. I have one client and she was, like, renting a room to now that's her husband. And now they just had a baby together. And so I've seen her whole journey. And it's so beautiful. And you know all yeah. their cheese, man. Huh? I know all their cheese, man. Like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> do you, what do you think about, like, what's your opinion on, like, wax educators? Yeah. Like, how is a person, like, how is someone going to be barely, like, starting and how should they start choosing? Like, what are some things that they should look out for when it comes to, like, waxing trainers? Yeah. So make sure it's in your budget for one. Obviously don't give your like last penny to a $5,000 class. Make sure that they're going to maybe give you a kit if that's something that you're interested in. Make sure that the class is a few hours long. It shouldn't be like a two hour class and $5,000, you know, Hell no. especially like waxing. It takes some practice. You're not going to just be able to watch it and know how to do it. You need a hands on practice. Yes. I think that you should have more than one model. I think that you know, I think that they should give you a vendor's list. I think it should come with ongoing mentorship. That's so funny, the vendor list that you say that, because yeah. mine does. Yes, me too. And I'm like, people don't, people gatekeep on where they get their stuff. And I yeah. literally tell my students, get it here, get it here, get it here, get it here. Like, it's literally a list and that I put And use code RE10 at checkout. <laughs> <laughs> no, period. And, um, and people all learn differently, too. You know, some people can visually see you do it, physically do it, but maybe they also need something on paper. So having a waxing manual really helps so that they can go home and they remember, you know, what direction are they going to apply the strip. And mm-hmm. all of my classes come with one free refresher class where they get to pick one service that we did in that day and they get to come back anytime. I'll provide the model and the materials and I'll rewalk them through how to do it. And you'll be surprised. Only a handful of people come back for that second free class. So it's all about what you want to get out of it. but. Yeah, I think that really says a lot about my class is that, you know, I gen- genuinely want you s- to succeed. And if you don't feel confident in something, come back. I will yeah. show you again. And is your class one day, two days? Like how? So I have I have a few different classes. I have like a full body class, a Brazilian boot camp, and I have a vajayashal class. They're all one day classes. My full body class is like about eight hours, like nine to five. Yeah. And then my other classes are a little bit shorter. So okay. yeah, they're one day. And do they all come with the full kit or like no. it varies? So only my full body kit, only my full body class comes with the kit. My uh Brazilian boot camp just comes with a goodie bag. And then my Vajayshu class actually does come with a kit as well. But they can always opt out of it if they already have the supplies. I knock it down a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. And do you do like a one-on-one, two-on-one? Like how how does that work? Yeah. So um I offer both one-on-ones and group trainings. I've done group trainings up to like seven people, and then I've done plenty of one-on-ones. Obviously, the one-on-ones are a little bit higher in price, but yeah. And when did you like how long did it like it take you to realize, okay, I'm gonna start training? Like I've I feel like because I see a lot of people that 
start in this industry and like four months later, they're teaching it. Yeah. So definitely wouldn't recommend that. I've had students that take my class and turn around and start teaching classes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, girl, you got to practice a little Mm -hmm. bit more before we're teaching people, you know? But um, I, it was during COVID that I started doing classes. Everyone was getting that good old stimulus check. Mm -hmm. So girl. I love that stimulus check. Yeah, I never got it, but please give me another one, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I did get the stimulus check. Yeah, I got one. I'm like, yeah, wait, you I better, get, girl. I did get the <laughs> stimulus check. Um, but during COVID, me and that girl that I was renting from in uh, Lakewood, we did classes together, and we made a lot of money, girl. We both made about thirty thousand dollars each on we were, the classes. On the classes, yeah, we did probably twenty classes together within COVID, and we had like seven girls each class. I remember we would separate our money. We'd walk away with like $7,000 each. This was a hot time. This is for one day? For one day, girl. That was probably the most money I've ever made in a day. Yeah. What? Yeah. So like classes pro- like, are so profitable. Yeah, they are. But are, are like with the with, with the kids too, like yeah. you'd obviously take that off, right? Or yeah. Would- so that was the total without expenses, obviously. So we were doing a full day. We were including a kit. The kit cost us a few hundred dollars um, or a couple hundred dollars. And so, yeah. And the models that you would get, would you provide their models or sometimes would you ask them like, because sometimes it's a hit or miss when it comes to models. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't want students working on them. Yeah. So I provide all the models. I post it. I only charge $20 for my models to come on in. And my clients love it. They grab it quick, girl. I post it and it's gone. I honestly, sometimes I like, I'm already knowing, oh, they're going to take it quick. So I'll post it like the day before and they all go, thank God. And Dang. so, yeah. and that's like hard for me because I feel like they're just so used to me. And I'm like, I'm yeah. like, I promise. And before it wasn't yeah. like that. I feel like before it would be like, I get models so fast, but I feel yeah. like now it's just gotten to the point where it's like, they don't want, they're so stuck with their person. They don't want to go with a student. I, you used, know? I used to do it for free, but then people started to not show up. And then you're like in a class and you're like, oh, your model's supposed oh, to be here. That. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I hope they're coming. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so um, now I charge a $20 deposit and I do let them know, you know, the student is really counting on it. Please make sure to be on time. Please make sure to be here. And I just stress that, you know, the student's paying a lot to be here and really counting on you being here. Yeah. And so now do you think you slowed down a lot with your classes? Like... Yes, I have. So during the pandemic, everybody had money to spend. Everyone wanted to start a new business. Mm-hmm. And now we're kind of going through like a recession. And so, Huge. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I've only done one class so far, but we're all in the second month of the year. And I do have some more scheduled. Um, but, yeah, they have slowed down a little bit. Yeah. How about your business overall? Like, can you do you see the analytics of like or your reports from your website mm-hmm. and you see it from COVID? Because this is what I do. Yeah. I see it from COVID and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like COVID, I was at I was making so much. Right. Yeah. And now I'm just like, wow, that huge drop. Yeah. Is crazy. Yeah, for sure. So I I'm making more now than I did during COVID because during COVID, my Brazilians were thirty five dollars. They're now seventy dollars. Mm-hmm. And then I also have two team members. So I've increased my revenue. I've doubled my revenue from last year that I was solo to now having two employees. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a major increase, but I've seen a major decrease in our actual being fully booked, if that makes sense. So I used to always be fully booked for years. I would fully book in like 30 minutes for the whole month. And it was such like a high and amazing feeling. And then now as we enter into this new year, like I got some openings in like two weeks. And that's so different for me. And so sometimes I tell myself, like, maybe it's just because I have employees and now they're getting sprinkled over to other girls. But also we're going through a recession. And I think like the, the clean girl aesthetic is really in. So some people are kind of dropping, like getting nails, getting lashes or just trying to save in different ways. And so people come and go, but there's always new clients to be found. So Yeah. And I feel like that when that happens, um, especially now, a lot of people get discouraged. Yeah, it is really discouraging, you know? for sure, especially for our new waxer. I know sometimes I'll post like today's agenda and people are like, girl, goals, like, I, you know, that's how many yes. clients I had all month. Yes. You know? It's really hard for new waxers compared to established waxers because it was just different when I started, you know? Yeah. It was quick to gain. And now it's definitely it takes a a little yeah. bit longer to get fully booked. And I feel like two people will ask me, like, how how do you get your books like that? And how do you get so yeah. booked? And I, I keep saying repeated things because that's what worked for me. Yeah. And I feel like in this generation, well, now what we're in, it's just like, it's not like that anymore. There's so many beauty professionals that there's just so many people to choose from. Yeah. So it's very saturated. It's so much different than it was five years ago. So you just have to find what makes you unique. You know, why should somebody book with you rather than someone else? And 
for us, it's just being genuine, being good to our clients, but everybody's nice. So, yeah. you know, it's hard. And I feel like what drew me to you, especially is because your color scheme, <laughs> I, the purple, the purple, like <laughs> it like catches my eye, yeah. you know, like it just like, if I see purple, I'm like, okay, I think that's of you right away. That's you one thing I mean? too, is I always keep my logo the same. I, I always keep my profile photo the same because I want people to recognize that. Yeah. And I think some people, maybe they change their profile photos. Yeah. And maybe people aren't recognizing like, oh, that's you. So I don't know. Yeah. And I feel like kudos to you because I can never. I mean, the only thing that I have purple is my my podcast. But everything girl, else purple is, people. You see this? It's just white. <laughs> Your it's, shop is beautiful. It's girl. just super plain. But that's my it's aesthetic, clean. though. It's clean and it's beautiful. And I'm really trying to veer more to like being clean and being minimalist. Because when I had that really tiny shop in Cyprus, girl, it was cluttered. And so I'm definitely <laughs> trying to spread out and clean up and just have a different aesthetic but always i'll always have purple because us purple girls yeah we just love purple we can't help it everything purple yeah <laughs> and that's why and i remember i you mentioned earlier like it's you humbled yourself right yeah so going from being fully booked within 30 minutes for years you know i thought like oh i'm good like yeah. I, I got it you know yeah. like i can have employees and they'll be fully booked too but then having employees and seeing them you know sometimes only having four or five employees in a whole day or four or five uh clients in a whole day definitely humbled me that it's going to take some work to get fully booked. And then now I have some openings. So I'm like, okay, back to square one. So we DM people every single day. Um, something that we do is we look up local beauty professionals near us that do other services that we don't offer. So like massage, um, uh, massage therapists, spray tans, um, hair girls, we look them up that are in our city and we look at who's commenting on their photos and we message them directly because if they're going to them for a service in our city, then they'll see that we're offering a beauty service and maybe be interested. And so we message them and we offer them a free brow and we just invite them into our salon. And we've gotten like five or six clients this way. And my idea is if they come once, they'll stay. And so even if they just come and get a free brow, it was nice I to meet them. I love that. And yeah. also too, I seen that you were putting like your flyers, right? Yeah. So another way of humbling yourself, girl, we got out <laughs> in these streets, we made flyers. We've done it three times now, um, offering different like promos, free brows. And we go like across the street into like the apartments and put flyers on all the cars. We go into like the shopping center. We introduce ourselves to the different businesses. And we give them our flyer and just invite us, invite them in. And we actually went to the gym across the street and they were like, once a month, we have an event where small businesses can come and have a little booth here. And so I want to do that. So it's cute. Yeah. I feel like I had one, I had a pop up. Okay. And um, I did, a, I had a permanent, uh, she did permanent jewelry. I had a hair tinsel girl that yeah. came. Um, she has, she does nails too. And then I had someone that does crepes and stuff. She does oh, like cool. all that stuff. And that brought me revenue. It's marketing, yeah. It was just marketing. Yeah. I definitely want to go know? to some farmer's markets and just get out there. I even want to go to esthetician schools and introduce ourselves. That's what let I know. Do. We do classes. We should do that together. Yes. That's our thing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that, you know, we could see from you in the future? So I have a lot of big plans. I feel like God puts different things on my heart and it's sometimes things I don't even want to do, but I'm like, oh, okay, I know I need to do that. So I want to have virtual trainings. I really want to get someone to come in and record. I saw you just recorded one of your classes. If you need somebody, girl, and I, I got you the best person. He does really good like videography. That's awesome. I used to have someone else, but he moved and he's just really far, but he does really good. Video. And did he record like a Brazilian one? Yes, girl. Okay. He was in the room and everything. He said, zoom in. And his wife was here. And, he, okay. and she, he, because there are a couple that do it. Hmm. And he was like, shout out to them, Sunset Media. Yeah. And he basically asked his wife, and she's like, go for it. Yeah. Like, like, you business is business. And you know, one thing that I really liked about him was that he was here all day. Wow. That's really, that's awesome. That's what you need, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to train wax or I really want to record wax classes. I look at my retail shelf and I see all these different brands and I'm like, why don't I sell everything on my own? Like, I know I can. I just need to take the time to create my own brands and have all my own products. But I would love to have my own sugar scrub, my own ingrown serum, my own body wash, everything of my own brand. Yeah. So that's a big goal of mine. Um, And I actually, I want to retire from waxing at 30. And so... Oh, wait. I'm 27, so okay. I have three more years of okay. waxing, and then I really want to run a shop. I want to have multiple girls. I want to have a storefront, and I, I'll continue to do wax classes. Maybe I'll work one day a week, um, but I want to start a family. I want to I wanna run the business from 
the outside. Yes. Yeah. I feel like that's literally my dream. And Goals. that's going to happen. It it's, will happen. It's going to happen. Absolutely. I'm working on it right now. Period. <laughs> <laughs> time, right? Literally. Yeah. I love what I do, but I want to raise a family. And your body can only take so much. And yeah. I feel yeah. like, too, it's just not It's not that waxing is tiring. I just feel like once you have a business, for me, for example, and I say this to everybody, I love what I do. Yeah. I love my clients. I love this business. I love just overall like waxing and skincare. I just felt I felt I fell in love with it. Yeah. But I think I fell in love with the business side more. Really? I, I think so. I think yeah. I fell in love with like numbers. opportunity. I fell in love with yeah, an opportunity. I fell yeah. in love with like building the shop because yeah. I know so much more. Like it just it taught me so much. And I feel like I opened this and I opened my mom's restaurant. So now I know how to do this That's type so of cool. business and a restaurant business. So doing those just help me and I just feel like I learned so much that yeah. I fell in love with that yeah. side and that's why I decided to go back to school to get my bachelor's in business that's so not cool. because I need it and yeah. they don't, they'll, they'll teach you some stuff yeah. and, I, and I have learned yeah. some stuff but I think I just wanted that to be under me and say hey not only am I ma- I majored in this so I know what the yeah. fuck I'm doing so they know they think they because I feel like that paper to them you sell if you tell someone that you have your bachelor's yeah. in something they're like oh my god like yeah. She knows what she's doing, even though I knew before that, you know? And what's so cool, too, is that you're a beauty professional. So, like, when I was at European Wax Center, the owners had such high expectations for us. They just talked to us in a way that they didn't understand what waxing was mm-hmm. and what it took to be a waxer or to take clients back to back. And so that would be beautiful for you as a business owner that you know what it takes. You, you know, you don't expect somebody to do everything in 10 minutes, you know? Yes. So I think that will take you far. Definitely that you started from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So watch us be pregnant together. Period. <laughs> we could baby bump next time. Yeah. <laughs> have a whole ass waxy maternity <laughs> shoe. That'd be so cool. I'll be like, what the fuck? We'll have like, a little stick next to our belly. <laughs> okay. Before we end this podcast, I want to hear a weird waxing story that you have. Okay. Or if you, if you have any. Yes. So you could tell us, <laughs> what, you could tell a future waxer what should they expect or if it just happened to you. Okay. So I have a couple of quirky stories, mm-hmm. but this current client, I'm going to keep her very anonymous, but um, I was waxing her Brazilian and um, after every single time I pulled a strip, her, okay, her man was there by the way, after every, and he was standing right next to us. Okay. So she's laying on the bed. Like she's laying fully. on the bed. I'm on this side. He's on this side. Right. Okay. And after every single time I pulled a strip, he would kiss her. And I was like, okay, like trying to mind my business, you know, not look. <laughs> and then um, not like making out, just like a not regular making pat. out, but just every single strip was a kiss. I was like, okay, whatever. Then um, we do knees up to chest, and um, I'm, you know, applying the booty strips, and he's like spanking her butt. Like I'm like, you gotta be letting like a me slap or like a tap, just like a tap, but it was making me <sighs> clap, you know. No, no. And I just felt disrespected, but I didn't know what to say, and it, I didn't know what to say, and so whatever. Then um, we're at the end of the service, and I let her know, like, hey, girl, you do have a couple little hairs left over. I tried my best to tweeze them all, but we really need to work on exfoliating. You know, you have some dry hairs, what have you. And he's like, oh my god, sixty dollars, and you didn't get all the hair. <laughs> he did not just tell you that. He said that. And then we walk up to the front and I'm like, oh, it's actually 70. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was so embarrassed and just just uncomfortable. And they're both really nice people and they probably didn't mean anything. But I did have to send her a message after and ask her, you know, next time, can you please just come in? And unfortunately, your boyfriend is no longer welcome in here. Because it just made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And if so. that makes you feel uncomfortable, that I mean, already like the slapping ass, the kissing, like. First of all, I don't even have anybody in the room when I'm waxing. So the yeah. fact that you even let someone in there. And he was like kind of hovering. And so it was just it was just too much. It was yucky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, kudos to you. Because if it was me, you're too nice. I would have been like, um, no, he's staying in the front. <laughs> yeah, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> yeah. I definitely learned a lesson, but I'm happy that I stood up for myself and I addressed the issue. Yeah. yeah. So is she, is she still, is she still your she client? She still is my client. And but, did that make her feel a type of way? I hope not. I mean, I don't know. So are they still together? They're still know? together. Yeah. They're husband wife. <laughs> they're nice. they're nice. Oh, wait. I didn't even mention a part. Okay. So when she was getting up, she was like whispering to him. She's like, oh, don't worry. These are different underwear from earlier. I was like, I was trying to mind my business. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, Ew. like they did the deed before they came or yes, something. That's what it means. That's I don't know. Nasty. It was violating. It was just too much. Oh, <laughs> no. See that. In, in, oh, no, I had. 
that's so gross. But I had something similar to me too. She had I used to work from home. Okay. And she I mentioned this before, but she literally got the D before she came into her stop her Brazilian. And you know, I always ask my clients, do you want to go to the restroom before the Brazilian? Yeah. There's a wipe in the restroom so you can go and head and clean yourself. And she was like, No, I'm okay. She comes and opens her legs, right? She loves them. And we know <laughs> the difference between discharge. Yeah. And we know the difference between Girl, she opened up her legs and bam, that shit was just gliding off. And it was the most disgusting <laughs> thing ever. And I just felt Did you so, wipe it? What'd you do? I felt very disrespected. Yeah. Because I asked you, did you use the restroom? And you said no. Yeah. And I did wipe it. I did her wax. Yeah. And then I did send her a text and I told her that I don't want to see. I basically fired Dang. her as a client. So you really addressed it. What if it was just discharge? What if? No, it wasn't. You know? Okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know the difference. You're brave. I don't know if I would have addressed it. I think I would have just been like, Oh, no. I mean, the thing is, like, I'm not afraid to address stuff if it makes me feel... I'm a very outspoken person, so I don't care if it bothers me. Like, I will literally tell them how I feel. Have you ever addressed anyone that has poop on their butt? No. No, me neither. But I have addressed someone that queefed. (laughs) What do you say? (laughs) She was... Because, you know, a lot of the times... Okay, I actually have a queefing story. Go ahead. Yeah, she, she queefed, right? Yeah. And she laughed at it. She was just laughing in my face. She's like, she was just like, she didn't even apologize for it. And she mm. was very rude. Oh. Okay. And the way she was, was she was <laughs> like her aura. She's been my, she was my client. She yeah. had come for a Brazilian four times. Okay. This is when I was again, my house. Stage. Okay. But she or had already came. And I just always had this vibe off of her. She was not like a really, I don't know, but she quits and she started laughing. And I literally stopped the Brazilian. Yeah. And I said, you have to go. But you're still going to pay for it. And she was like, why do I have to pay for it if I'm half waxed? I said, because if you don't, we're going to have to handle it outside. And I really said that. <laughs> you and said if that you're I watching this, you. you know who you are. No. <laughs> I will fight you over that, queen. <laughs> and she grabbed the cash and like went like this and dropped it in front of me. I was like, bye, Scary. Bitch. Oh, my and goodness. And she left. And she left. And I wrote, she wrote me a huge review. And it was such a bad review. Did she mention the queef? No. <laughs> she said in response and there was a yeah, place she was like she, she had mentioned some other she was like she was five minutes behind like other bullshit and I'm like dude like you didn't me-, and I literally yeah. wrote back on there I was like but did you mention the queef <laughs> you're, you're savage <laughs> yeah because you're not gonna do, especially because yeah. like you know I'm a solo like I yeah. at that time I was just like I can't we can laugh it off and we can be cool but yes. don't like be mean about don't it don't be mean yeah. about it uh, don't apologize for it and yeah. I get it queefing is normal for us girls yeah. right but like if you're literally gonna have your legs open and my freaking face is right there in your yeah. vagina and you're gonna just queef and you're gonna you're literally gonna laugh and not apologize to me yeah. bitch, i'm kicking you off my bed or at least clarify like that wasn't a fart yeah. <laughs> like, and, I've had, <laughs> and i've had clients that queefed before and they're yeah. like oh my god girl i'm so sorry and they're so embarrassed about it and i'm like girl it's fine yeah you know like i i have that like vibe with them. yeah but if it's the client that i already didn't have a vibe with i'm like no I always do the lay on your tummy, hold the sides open. Okay. And then, but one time I was doing a refresher class where I let a student come back and do the refresher. And she's like, oh, can we have her do like doggy position? Like that's easier for Mm -hmm. me. And I was like, okay, sure. I don't usually do that. Girl, the girl flipped over and queefed. And I was like, this is why we don't do doggy position. (laughs) Like I felt so sad and embarrassed for her. I'm like, girl, it's not you. You're good. You're good. No, at least you didn't fart. (laughs) Yeah. And if I queefed, I would clarify. Yeah. So that girl shouldn't have just laughed. <laughs> and the thing is, like, we don't, I, and I want to clarify this, we don't say these stories to make fun of our clients. Yeah, we're all human. We're, we're all human. girls. And the thing is that, like, there's so much to expect if you're going to become a waxer. Yeah, you have to be professional and professional. Yes, unless if it happens, and understanding. what happened to you? Yeah. What happened to me then? You would G for that, girl. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's because, like, I you always tell my students too, like if there's a smell, if there's um like poop or anything, please be professional. Don't make yeah. the person embarrassed. No. Like you know, just don't go posting about it. Don't three seconds post later. about it. No, that's horrible. Don't do that. Just literally, I wax right over it. Yeah, <laughs> just go on with your day. Ask them. Oh my god, girl, how's your day? And just keep going. Oh yeah, there's plenty of times that people accidentally fart, and I I pretend like I didn't even hear it. I'm like, yeah, so it's been raining a lot lately. <laughs> I'm like more embarrassed to address it. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like I just don't, I want them to come back to me. <laughs> yeah. And I want them to feel like this is like a trust, like this, this a is a space. So, yes, yeah, exactly. It's a safe space and a yeah. place where you can come and you can trust me and yes. everything that happens in here is going to stay in here. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? 
So I wanted to clarify that. Yes. <laughs> we're nice girls. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we're already almost done with our podcast. But before we end, we always end this podcast with a quote. Yes. So do you have a quote for us? So I couldn't do this without God. So um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because he's guided me this far. And I know he's going to continue to open up doors for me. So I can't uh, take it all in without him. So, yeah. Oh, I love quote. that. And that's actually so beautiful because that was our first quote about God, right, Marlo? Aww. <laughs> and this is our first episode of season four. Yes. I'm so that's beautiful. Well, thank awesome. you so much for joining my podcast. Thank you for having me. And it I hope an to honor. have you back. I would love to be back. And I hope we're pregnant together at 30. Period. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Bye, Bye. guys.